Welcome to Textonation. Joining us is Andrew Cook, the CEO of a company called C4Matics, S-E-A-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-C-S. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. No problem. Thanks for having me. Really, really interesting company, Andrew, that you've got going on there. And uh, I'll let you tell us, first of all, what it's all about. Yeah, so Seaformatics was uh, founded about three years ago, and our first product that we launched is called the Water Lily, which is a personal portable uh, micro river turbine uh, that allows you to recharge electronics when you're out, you know, away from the electricity grid. So that includes people like, you know, campers and hikers and paddlers. It's also people that are, you know, working in areas where they have limited access to power, like biologists and archaeologists and that sort of, you know, those sort of occupations. Um, and also people that are just living without access to power. So, you know, we've got water delays now in use by, you know, people all over the world that are, are just living, you know, off grid. So it's a water turbine. How big is it? So it's pretty small. It's, it's just a six inch uh, water turbine. I have one here. So you've got to get a size of sense of scale. So there it is there. Um, so it's, it's a six inch diameter blades. Um, and it weighs about just a little over two pounds. So it's pretty tiny and it produces uh, 15 watts. That's absolutely amazing. Well, and we're gonna, you've got a brand new product coming out too. Before we get into that, yep. what's the backstory here? Well, how yeah, did this all come about? So there's a pretty, it's, it's a pretty long one, but I'll give you the Reader's Digest version of it. Um, <laughs> So myself and my co-founders, we actually worked at a university here in uh, St. John's, Newfoundland uh, called Memorial University. Um, and we worked there on a research project uh, that was actually to develop uh, larger subsea turbines, um, but not, not huge subsea turbines, larger turbines for powering sensors and instruments that are used by, you know, oceanographers and engineers for measuring things in the ocean. So, you know, they're out there uh, measuring uh, parameters, you know, like currents and waves and salinity and all that sort of thing, um, and really to do science. So it could be, you know, for global warming. It also could be for, you know, locally here we have a lot of offshore oil and gas. So the offshore oil and gas operators do collection. All those instruments were powered with batteries. So, you know, it was really costly to every six months or every year to go out in a big ship and you know change a battery in a, in a sensor so uh the idea was to produce these turbines so that they could actually um recharge batteries in the field using low speed ocean currents and keep uh those sensors out for longer saving them you know money of ship the, the money and the cost on ship time so um we actually launched the company once we we finished that research project you know it was pretty su successful we collected data for some oil and gas clients here uh, just before the end of that project. And then uh, we um, launched the company. So we actually went out to try to commercialize that tech in subsea. Um, and we had a really hard time trying to get, you know, uh, somebody to be an early adopter. It was, you know, most of our clients tend to be really risk averse. So to adopt a new piece of technology was really tough for, to, to do. So. At a certain point in our, you know, after the first six months or so, we, we kind of said, we got to do something different. So what else can we do with this technology? So but all of us were, were avid, you know, outdoors people. And uh, if, if you know anything about Newfoundland, you know that we've got a ton of water and a lot of rivers. And we said, you know what, we can use a smaller version of the water lily in a river. So we actually, um, we found, we scrounged a little bit of money to build the first prototype. Um, it was only a few thousand dollars and, uh, you know, we, we, we said it was kind of funny because what myself and one of my other co-founders said, well, if we get anything out of this, at least we'll have our own personal turbines to use. If, even if it is complete failure, we'll still be able to charge our own stuff. So, um, we, uh, we launched, we shot a video of it, the, the very first prototype and put it on Facebook and within a few hours it had 30,000 views um, just by sharing it to our own personal pages. So it kind of took off from there. It just went, you know, viral like really quickly. So, so we launched the, the product in April of 2017. Um, took us a long time to go from prototype to actual manufactured product. Uh, it was about a year before we started shipping the, the final product. So 
Um, we started shipping in 2018, in April, May 2018, and 2019 we're just in sales mode. Now in 2020, we've launched a new product again. And uh, just describing the water lily again for us, I know we, we got to look at it. How deep does the water have to be? Does it have to cover? Yeah. How, so much, how much do you need? Water, yeah. So if you look at the water lily, six inches, it should be fully submerged because any part of the blades that are out of the water, it means that they're not working. So you want water to be impacting all the blades so that all of them are working at the same time. Then you get maximum amount of power, maximum efficiency. And what's anchoring it to... Where yeah, so the way I don't actually have the lanyards on this one right now, but um, the way it works is there's four lanyards that come off the, to the front. It's anchor to an anchor point, and then you can tie it off to a, you know a rock or a log or you know some sort of anchor point upstream. So it just holds itself in the stream. Very cool. And then you can attach that to a, a battery, or what? What does it get yeah, attached so to? So this one here that I've got on my desk, if I think if you should be able to see. So it comes out to, it's got a 10 foot cord, then it comes out to our little electronics block, which is fully waterproof and sealed. Um, and then this one happens to be a USB. So it's got a little sealed USB port on the end. So you can plug in, you know, USB devices, um, like, you know, cell phones, battery banks, that sort of thing. Um, we also have another version, which is a 12 volt version. Uh, although we, we call it 12 volt because it's compatible with 12 volt systems, but it produces 14.6 volts, which is, you know, enough to charge, you know, lead acid batteries, um, larger battery banks. Like, I don't know if you've seen things like the Goal Zero, you know, sure, uh, sure. Yetis and Sherpas and those type ones, they need a higher voltage to charge. So there's a ton of these bigger kind of portable generators out there that, that the 12 volt version will charge as well. Really cool. And now... You're getting out of the water. <laughs> Tell me what you're doing. Yeah, so we the window the, the water lily itself, interestingly enough, this guy here actually also does work in wind. Um, but it needs a pretty strong wind. And again, if you know anything about Newfoundland, we are, we're also probably one of the windiest places in the world. So uh, wind is not an issue here, but um, the, wa the water lily itself needs such a strong wind that you probably wouldn't want to be out necessarily camping in it. To, to work. So we've had a lot of customers that have come back to us and said, you know what, love water lily, love the river power aspect of it, but we really like something that works in low speed winds. So we spent a lot of engineering time over the last year um, developing a wind turbine attachment. So it's, which is called the wind lily, which actually clips on to the front of a water lily and turns it into a, a small wind turbine. So it's, um, uh, it's around 300 millimeter diameter. So it's about, uh, that's about uh, one foot diameter uh, blades. And it starts working, the wind lily will start working in um, wind speeds down around seven miles per hour. So, uh, you know, relatively low speed winds. And can it produce the same amount of, of power that, uh, that it can in water? Yeah, so it, it actually will produce, uh, uh, it actually produces a little bit more power. Um, and, you know, the water lily can produce more than 15 watts as well. We, we like to quote 15 watts because that's a reasonable expectation. We don't want to kind of, you know, there's a lot of, say, to give you an example, there's a lot of solar panels out there that quote, say, 100 watts, which you'll never actually get 100 watts out of them because, you know, you'd need to be in a lab environment to actually get that. So, again, uh, water lily, we quote 15 watts. The wind lily will actually do up to about 23 watts. Um, and that's in about a 30, well, I got to try to convert in my head because we're in metric here. So it, the wind lily will work uh, at 23 watts in about a 35 kilometer hour wind. So to convert that to miles per hour, it's like in the high 20s, I guess, 25 mile per hour. Um, so uh, water lily will do the same. So we we can actually produce uh, up to around 23 watts with water lily, but it's got to be towed. It's got to be going pretty fast. So an example would be towing it with the sailboat. Um, so if you take a water lily, put it in the water, and then tow it behind a sailboat going, you know, six knots, then you know you'll get more than 15 watts out of it. But uh, to find a six knot river uh, is, is not that easy. So. 
Really, really fascinating. So who, your market for this, I, it seems like it could be pretty broad. Obviously, outdoor enthusiasts, campers, maybe right. RVers could, could use uh, this, this uh, technology as well. Yeah, so we've been pretty focused on our marketing. So we focus pretty solely on the outdoor enthusiasts right now. Um, so, and that includes, you know, camping, people that are doing camping, people that are RVing, um, paddling, that sort of thing. And we tend to focus more on people that are, you know, less weight conscious. We don't go at, we don't market towards, we're not targeting people like, you know, ultralight hikers who are not going to carry, you know, a two pound generator with them. Um, but the interesting thing is water, like you said, has a pretty broad market. So um, we're also, uh, we, we, Waterley is actually in use by the military already. Um, so the Canadian Special Forces are already using Waterley. Um, although, you know, it's kind of one of those things where they don't really talk about what equipment they have, but, um, but they are using it. Um, and then if you look at, you know, areas like sailing, that's one that I mentioned, that's kind of a group that we haven't really targeted much, but it can be used by people that are sailing as well. And then the off-grid living people. So, and that's an area that we want to go in the future. Um, we do right now have a number of people kind of in, in areas where, you know, they're living in kind of what we call energy poverty. So, uh, you know, they don't have access to reliable electricity. And, um, you know, example would be, uh, there's, a, there's a man who brought some to the uh, French Polynesian Islands. And uh, he provided water lilies to the people living in villages that don't have access to power. So they're just using it for lighting, something as basic as an LED light, you know, changing their lives. So that's an area where we want to go in the future. We're just looking for partners right now to help us take it into those countries and, you know, get people access to power. Really interesting. And uh, there are advantages, I suppose, to, to the use of solar panels, which are pretty widespread today. Um, maybe some disadvantages too. So maybe you have people using, using both, uh, right. depending on the situation. Correct. So like when it comes to renewables, you know, we're not, we're not trying to, you know, say you got to replace your solar, pan solar panels with water release. We're trying to say, you know, all these technologies are complementary. So, um, but the nice thing is you don't want to hedge your bets on, on, you know, sun, the sun always shining. Um, you want to be able to generate power for yourself almost 24 hours a day. So, you know, a combination of water lily, wind lily, solar panels, any other renewables that you have, if you really need power, that's what you need to do. You need to, you need to be able to extract power from a, a bunch of different sources. So, so that's kind of our mantra is, is, you know, being able to have access to power 24 um, seven is, is important. Can multiple units be used? Uh, I don't know if they can be tied together more or less, or, or yes, you would they, have to use them separately? No, so actually they can. Uh, the 12 volt version, you can actually use multiple. So, you know, you can do two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, uh, join them up in, in, in um, parallel to give you more power. So, um, and we, we've also hooked 12 volt units up to solar panel systems as well. So they, they're all complementary. Really cool. Well, tell us now about uh, availability and pricing. Yeah, so um, the right now it's actually kind of a, a weird time uh, because we actually ran out of stock of all of our inventory, partly due to COVID and, and other delays with our manufacturers. So the water is made in, actually, made in Canada, actually, uh, in Toronto, Ontario. So uh, between our suppliers and our manufacturer in Toronto and COVID, everything got delayed. So we actually just recently stocked out on all of our turbines. But we're also releasing a new water lily and a new wind lily right now. So uh, shipping is going to start sometime in the next few weeks. Um, we're just waiting for shipments from our supplier right now. And uh, pricing, so the, the water lily turbine itself, the basic one is $189 US. Um, and then the wind lily uh, wind blade attachment is $99 US. Uh, but right now we're doing a pre-order uh, for the wind lily, which comes with a water lily. So it's a wind lily, a water lily, and a bunch of other little attachments and, and pieces uh, that for 269 US. 
And you have to decide at the time you order whether or not you want the USB or the 12 volt uh, cable, or can they be interchanged? Or? So they, they can't be interchanged right now. Um, so right now you got to pick between 12 volt or USB. The, the, the advantage of the 12 volt is that, you know, it can charge 12 volt systems, but it also comes with a little car adapter. Uh, so it's like a cigarette lighter socket, which you can put a USB power or a USB charger into and then charge USB devices as well. And is that an additional price for, for the add-on cabling or is that included? I believe with the bundle that's included, uh, I'm pretty sure that's included with the 12 volt bundle. Where do you want to take this from here? I mean, you've got this uh, design for portability and in, in use the way, the way you have it right now. Where do you want to go with it? So I think, you know, we've only kind of struck the, we're, we've been so focused on one small market um, that, you know, for the future, we can see there's a, we have a bunch of um, new product ideas that are, they're coming down the stream, uh, you know, literally. And so to speak. <laughs> so to speak. Um, but we really want to start to look at some of those other markets that I talked about. So, uh, you know, we're, we're actively uh, talking with the military now. Um, we want to look at sailing and boating as a, as a, a really good uh, market for us. And we really want to start to push into, you know, the, the energy poverty, third world uh, areas where people don't have access to electricity. Um, because, you know, we, we were really blown away when we got that first video from French Polynesia where, you know, they're holding the water lily in a waterfall and, you know, somebody plugs in a light and the whole village just cheers, right? So you know, it, it made us feel really good. And some, that's an area where we really want to go in the future. Can, can the wind lily be used on top of a, a vehicle or an RV? Or is that too much wind? So it's probably not worth attaching any sort of wind turbine to a vehicle because the amount of power you get out versus the amount of power that you lose in drag and all that sort of thing, it's, it's just, you, you, you're never going to get you know, 100% energy conversion. So you're going to lose a lot of energy and drag. So it'd be fine if you're parked, um, you know, but once you're actually driving, it's probably not worth, not even just a water lily or wind lily, it's probably not worth putting any wind turbine on a vehicle while you're moving. Very cool. So for more information, where do people go? Yeah, so you can come straight to our website. So our website is www.waterlilyturbine.com. And it's spelled water, L-I-L-Y, T-U-R-B-I-N-E dot com. Correct. Really cool stuff. We're, we're looking forward to seeing what is next. Andrew yep. Cook, thank you for taking the time with us. Yeah, no problem. Have a great day.